All right. I got in an argument with someone who I have a lot of respect for and knows what he's talking about. He said that you should always absolutely mow your clover when it goes to flower to make it more nutritious. I've always held that it does not make it more nutritious. It makes it more uh, lignified, stemmy, and there's no reason to mow it unless you have tall weeds. So what I decided to do is mow some clover and leave some of it go to seed. Okay, it'll go to flower, I should say. So once it was in flower, I took samples from the the flowering red clover, and I took samples from the mowed clover that grew back a little bit. And uh, I only took samples of what deer would normally eat. In other words, the the outer leaves and stems, the small stems. Took them down to the ag analytical lab and had total nutrient uh, analysis done on them. Now, I also took bricks readings a month ago. It has not rained for a month here. And I took bricks readings just the other day. And that was pretty, pretty interesting because I had about a 12, which is pretty good, not great, but good, uh, and high mineral content uh, indicated on the bricks reading a month ago. But now with the drought, uh, both samples had poor bricks readings. It was really difficult for me to even get any sap out of them. It's so dry uh, to analyze. So I thought that was uh, kind of educational with the drought the way it is, the um, palatability, the sugar levels. Rick's readings measures the sugar levels in the sap. So the sugar levels are way down, very poor, and um, it's something to keep in mind. I mean, there's nothing you can do about a drought, but just know that your forage goes down in quality due to the lack of rain. All right, so I got my analysis back, so let's head in to the computer and we'll take a look at what we came up with. Okay, taking a look at the results, here's your unmowed red clover here and your mowed red clover here. We have uh, macronutrients and micronutrients. Take a look at what happened with the nitrogen. The nitrogen is actually higher in the mowed clover, which I was a little surprised to see. Uh, this is uh, this column is whether the numbers are in the normal range for that plant. Okay, so we have um, as usual our sulfur is a little low, and sulfur is very important for certain amino acids and in protein synthesis. So when you have a high nitrogen content and sulfur, that's your protein indicator. So I would say the protein is a little higher in the mode, but you can see that there's very little difference. Calcium is actually significantly higher in the unmowed sample. Now, when you get into the micronutrients, they're all pretty good and very similar to each other as well. Um, it looks like uh, boron is higher in the in the uh, unmowed. Boron is very important in um, nitrogen fixation. And uh, let's see, zinc is pretty close. Copper is higher in the unmode. So your micros are a little better uh, in general. Now let's look at it in a bar chart setup. What I did was, since these are small numbers, uh, I multiplied them by 100 so that the bar chart would show a good comparison. Otherwise, it would all just be, it, you wouldn't be able to see the bars. Okay. So this makes it a little easier to see. Blue is unmowed, red is mowed. Nitrogen, uh, even though mowed is a little higher, potassium, mowed is a little higher, but calcium is quite a bit more in the unmowed. And these are not too far off from each other. Now, I have to say that this is not a scientific sampling 
study. Okay, so if I were to do this in, in a university study, I would have more highly controlled uh, setup, and I would also have way more samples. So, like, you'd have to have, at the very least, you'd have to have a, a uh, 10 samples, let's say. And I'm not going to do that because this costs like 48 bucks. So I'm not going to spend 500 bucks on sampling. And you could probably uh, make it more accurate to have several different fields. Okay. But just this one sample, this is what I got. Now, um, taking a look at this and trying to decide whether to mow or not. That is uh, the question. So what do we do about mowing? Okay, having looked at that chart, I would say that, in my opinion, it's still that you should not mow clover unless you absolutely have to. For one thing, the height, you can see the height of that clover, especially red clover, um, it's pretty tall. And why mow that off and take away that habitat? There's plenty of room in there for turkey poults, small mammals, and also when clover goes to flower, you're feeding a lot of pollinators. So we want to be bee friendly anytime that we can. So I don't see any reason to mow your clover when it goes to flower. It's in, and also when you mow it, as I said before, it becomes, uh, it, you know, the total plant becomes more lignified. Okay. So you're, you're growing new stems. It gets very stemmy. And it's uh, not necessary to mow it unless you have broadleaf weeds that are go also going to flower. You don't want them to go to seed and start taking over your clover plot. You want to mow them off. Normally, that would happen a little bit later in the summer, like in July. And I would mow that high. So keep in mind that, that deer do not eat all of the clover plant usually they just eat the leaves and the the stems of those outer leaves because that's where they're more palatable they're they're newer and more palatable the other thing is this drought i mean the drought is pretty bad uh it hasn't rained here in a month and the clover actually even though it's surviving a lot better than grass it is uh not doing well so the bricks levels as i said were very low so that's going to decrease palatability the moisture content is low, also decreasing palatability. Chicory right now has a nice deep tap root and it can get down to where the moisture is and bring it up to the surface. Uh, some some uh, collards right now would be a good thing to have on hand because also uh, deep tap root, they're getting down to the moisture and bringing it up. So that gets us back to having uh, a mix of plants so that if one isn't doing well, Another one is so the deer always have something to eat in that site. All right. Well, I hope that clears up the mow or not mow question. It might have even brought up more questions in your head. But at least now we know that there really isn't that much difference when you mow it. So only mow when you have weeds. And that'll save you gas, time, and maybe even some pollinators. All right. See you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.